Now, here is the thing about fruit first. Fruit is the only one thing that can tell us about the nature of the tree. Father, our souls are expecting to receive from you. Give us your word this morning. Send us your word this morning. Deliver us through this word. In the name of Jesus. Father, the Bible says, in their distress, they cry unto you. Just as we are crying to you this morning. Please send this word to set us free. To restore us, O oh Lord. To bless us. To comfort us. To educate us. To rebuke us. To arrange us. To make us successful. Just as our souls are succeeding. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Can somebody give Jesus a round of applause? I hope you understand why you are clapping for the Lord. When you are thinking about everything the Lord has done for you, when you are thinking about all the deliverance, the help, the support that you have received from the Lord, he is worthy for us to clap and to give him praise and honor. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for leaving your house, your comfortable bed, and coming to listen to the word of God. And my prayer is the Lord to use us to speak to you and to bless you. Amen. Three, three readings. The first one in the book of John chapter 15, verse 8. John chapter 15, verse 8. It is written as follows. Verse 8. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples. So Jesus said, God is glorified when we bear more fruit. Roman, rather let's go to Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. Are you there? Great. Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. The Bible says, the X is already at the root of the trees. <laughs> and every tree that does not produce good fruit. I want to attract your attention. Here the Bible doesn't say the one does not produce the fruit. But the one who does not produce good fruit. You can produce fruit. But if those fruits are not good, the Bible says, you'll be cut down and thrown into fire. And the last one, Roman chapter 8. Roman chapter 8, verse 19. A beautiful and well-known scripture. Roman chapter 8, verse 19. The Bible says... For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. In other version, they say, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Amen. My message this morning is titled, How to Become Fruit Bearers. Or How to Bear More Fruit. We want to become fruit bearers. We want to produce fruit. So we want to know what can we do. From the scriptures that we just read now, we saw that God wants us to produce more fruit. And he said that the more we produce fruit, the more God will be glorified. 
So we can only glorify God by producing the fruit. Not any kind of fruit, the Bible said, to produce good fruit. Because there are people who are producing fruit, but they are not good fruit. When you eat them, it's sour. When you, freak, when you eat them, it's already destroyed. It gives you sickness and disease. But God wants us to produce fruit. He wants us to bear fruit and to bear more fruit and good fruit. Amen. Amen. Now, here is the thing about fruit first. Fruit is the only one thing that can tell us about the nature of the tree. Fruit is the only one thing that can tell us about the nature of the tree. Because fruit will never lie about the nature of the tree. Anything else can confuse us. The leaves of the tree can confuse us. The size of the, th the tree can confuse us. But when the fruit start going out of the tree, then the nature of the tree will be determined. So the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 18, Matthew 7, verse 16 to 18, that it is impossible for a bad tree to bear good fruit or to bear nice fruit. And it's impossible for good tree to bear wrong fruit. So fruit is the only thing that can tell us about the nature of the tree. So if we do not see the fruit, you can tell us that you are a child of God. You can tell us that you are a minister. You can wear, you know, the pastor's, you know, collar. That does not say anything. Coming to church, having the sticker of the church, having the church member card, you know, talking about Jesus does not make us, does not show that you are a child of God. What shows that you are a child of God is the kind of fruit that you produce. Amen. And the more we bear fruit, is the more God will be glorified. John chapter 15 verse 8. We read it. The Bible says that if you bear more fruit, my father will be Glorify. There is nothing that glorifies God more than to bear fruit. There is nothing that glorifies God more than to bear fruit. So for you to glorify God is only when you bear fruit and you bear more fruit and good fruit. And the third thing, the third thing, good fruit are the one we are expecting. Good fruit is what we are expecting, good fruit. Not only fruit, but we are expecting you to bear good fruit because useful fruit are good fruit. You may bear for us a lot of fruits, but if those fruit are not good, we can't use them. So the issue about fruit is to become more and to be useful. And for the fruit to be useful, it must be a fruit of a good quality. Amen? Amen? For a fruit to be useful, it must be of good quality. It's happened to me that I bought fruit and I left them aside for so long. When I went to them, I realized that all my apples were decayed. I take the first one and I look, it's decayed. The second one, then I realized all my bunch of fruit were decayed. I had to throw them away. It was painful. Because I bought them with money, but I did not use them. Why? Because they are no longer of a good quality. They were fruits, but they are not in good quality. This morning, God wants us not only to bear fruit, but he wants us to bear fruit of good quality. And he wants you to bear fruit of good quality. Because fruit which are usable, which are useful, are only fruit of good quality. And the last thing, about fruit, the Bible says that the whole nature is waiting for the manifestation or the unveiling of the sons of God. You see, when you speak about unveiling, is to remove a cover and to expose the beauty of something, a sculpture, a statute, or anything. 
When you go to the unveiling tombstone, you will find that the nice tomb is covered. And then they have to remove the cover so that they can expose the beauty. So in other way, God or the nature, the entire nature, people are surrounding you. They are waiting for the cover to be removed so that your beauty may be revealed. And what will do that? What will do that is the production of good fruit. What the nature is waiting, they are not waiting for anything else. They are waiting for the fruit. Because what they will use are fruit. They will eat the fruit. Fruit will give them healthy. Fruit will give them joy. So if you do not produce fruit, they will never know that you're a child of God. People will be attracted to you, not by your sons. Oh, or maybe let me make it better. People will be, can be attracted to you by what you are doing as sons and wonders. But people will remain to, in close to you when they will see fruit. You may be doing wonders, but when people come to you and they get hurt, what they do? They will leave you with your wonders. That's why you see most of beautiful ladies are those who don't have marriage. Then you ask, what a beautiful, because people think that the beauty I'm having is enough. No, the beauty I'm having is not enough. The fruit are more important. That's why you see some certain person can be ugly, we go to the marriage and people are saying, how an ugly woman can get such a handsome man? Or how an ugly man can have such a beautiful woman? Fruits are involved. Fruit will determine who's going to remain close to you. If you are producing good fruit, people will remain close to you. But if you are producing sour fruit, people will go and look for fruit. Maybe they were attracted because of suns and wonders. The suns and wonders are only the color of the leaves. Suns and wonders are only the size of the leaves. But when people will be attracted by the leaves, what will make them remain under the tree of your life is the kind of fruit you are producing. Hello? The kind of fruit that you are producing will make you have, be surrounded by people. But if your fruit are wrong, are bad, are sour, are deep, people will come, will be attracted, but the moment they will eat the fat fruit, they will eat your anger. They will eat your lies. They will eat your, I don't know, your short temper. You will see them departing from you. Why? Because of the fruit. But bless be the name of the Lord. Because this morning, God wants to unveil. He wants to remove the cover so that the good fruit may come out from you. He wants people to eat the good fruit. The Bible says the entire nature is waiting. The unveiling. Why it is waiting? Because we, was attra we were attracted by the politician. We expected things from the politician, but politician has deceived us. We have expected things from our parents. Our parents have deceived us. We have expecting things from school. School have deceived us. We have been expecting things from government. Government have ex has deceived us. The only one thing now which the entire world is looking at is the revelation of the sons of God. And the sons of God, if you read that word, son, in Hebrew or in Greek, is uios. Uios is a mature son. A mature son. Remember, in Israel, there were infant and there were uios, the sons. The infant were under the guardian in the family. So they may be the heir of the family, but they cannot enjoy anything because they're still infant. They will wait until they will become uyos. They will become sons. They will become mature. Then they will give them the inheritance of the family. Then they can enjoy it. So as long as they're still infant, they cannot receive anything. That's why the entire earth is not waiting for the children of God. It's waiting for the sons of God. Those who are ready to take over the business of their father. They are ready to take over the business of God. They are ready to manifest the glory of God. They are ready to show that uh, children of God, I mean sons of God, are reality. Amen. You see, if you go around, people that don't believe in Christianity anymore. Because of everything that you have seen around. 
because of every deception that you've seen around. People who call themselves Christian, but later on, here comes a video. People have called them that pastor, but later on, here see that they are pregnant somebody there. You know, we are so much disappointed by people who have been expecting. It is time for the true sons of God to rise up and to show that, uh, yes, we have seen that but there are still people who are sons of God, who are showing the faithfulness to God. We are showing the, free, the true fruits. Amen. You know, now if you say you're a child of God, everybody saying that maybe you have a double life. This is what is happening. Because we've received so much deception, disappointment. People we trusted, people we put our trust in, they've so much deceived us uh, that now when somebody say, I'm a man of God, we are on our guard because we never know what will happen. But let me tell you, every time you see a copy, you must always, don't forget that there is an original of that copy. And I'm telling you, every time you see a copy of sons of God, they are original of children of God. They are those who are fearing God. They are those who are walking with God. They are those who are walking in the path of God. And those are the people, the nature, the family, the government is waiting to be revealed. And God wants to remove that veil so that those people may be revealed. It is time for people who go to government, they should look. Work for the people with sincerity and with integrity. It is time for us to have integ uh, uh, doctors of integrity, to have uh, people in the municipality of integrity, to have mayors of integrity, to have president of integrity, and it is possible. Amen. You see, in your mind, you are thinking that, no, pastor, those people are not found anymore. Elijah was having the same thought. They asked him, God asked him the question, where are you going, Elijah? And then he told, he told God, I was left alone fearing you. Now I'm running away from Jezebel. God told him, you are not alone. There are 7,000 other people outside there who did not bow their knees before the bell. They are still there. It's just that I did not show you them, but they are there. You are not alone. You are 7,001 people. I declare that 7,001 people shall be manifested in the name of Jesus. Here in the Rustenburg, here in our church, so that people may know that we still have true children of God. Those who fear God, those who are walking with God, those who are honoring God, those who are praising God, those who belong to Jesus Christ. The Bible says the nature is waiting for them. Your family is waiting for them. Your church is waiting for them. Your city is waiting for them. Your street is waiting for them the revelation of the sons of God Hallelujah. those who are walking with integrity those who are walking in the fear of the Lord those who are showing that they are sons of the Lord you know when you are a son that you don't have to prove it we will see that you are a son when you are a son of God we don't need to prove it we will see it by your action when you are a good tree, no matter the discussion we can do, no matter the things we can say about you, we will wait until you produce the fruits. The fruit will say everything about the nature. The fruit will determine your nature. The fruit will determine your nature. You can have tall wings or tall leaves. You can have maybe a tall tree. It's fine. We will be afraid, but the fruits will determine how many people come under your tree. If you see kids under the tree and throwing the stone on that tree, don't worry, that tree is producing fruit. And if they come even more, it means that that tree is producing the best fruit of the other trees around. I don't know if you played when we were small. We used to go and uh, play and, uh, and take some oranges from, from the trees. If this tree orange... He is producing the best fruit. All of us will come under that tree. Because you know that one is producing fruit, but it is sour. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus, so that you may produce good fruit. When people eat fruit from you, they shall remain there. They shall remain there. When the husband will come to you, he shall remain because of producing good fruit. When a wife will come to you, he shall remain because of producing good fruit. When a friend will come to you, they shall remain there because of producing good fruit. God wants you to be productive. God wants you to be a fruit bearer. But you must bear good fruits. Hallelujah. Good fruits, that's what you're waiting. Now, 
How can you produce fruit? Because you can see that fruit is important. You see, brothers and sisters, people will follow you by your fruit. They will follow you by your fruit and they will remain there by your fruit. If you are producing good fruit, people will remain close to you. But if you are producing complicated fruit, people will run away from you. Sometimes when people are going away from you, do not cast demons. Demon has nothing to do. When fiancé are running away from you, don't cast demons. They have nothing to do. Check your fruit. Check the kind of person you are. Check the kind of behavior you are displaying. There are people, they are looking for marriage, but the attitude, the way he's carrying himself, no man can come closer. The way he's carrying herself, no man can come closer. Change first your attitude. Change, produce good fruit. And then when the people will try it, it's so nice. Tomorrow they will look for that place again. Beloved, there is a gentleman who used to sell oranges somewhere there uh, close to engine garage in that old Pretoria Road, if you know the place. You know, there's this kind of gentleman who used to sell me nice one. So every time I pass there and I see he's not there, I'm afraid to buy from anyone else because I'm not sure about the quality. But when I see him, I buy because I've tried before. And he sold me nice fruit. So now when I see him, I want to buy from him. Because my mind is telling me, this guy knows where to find good fruit. I want to come back to him. I want to give him more business. It's the same thing. If you as a child of God, you have good behavior. You have good fruit. You are producing. I'm not talking about only fruit. I'm talking about good fruit. Because they are fruit and they are good fruit. We are not talking only about you producing fruit. You are giving, but you're not giving well. <laughs> you are laughing to people. You are laughing. You are making people happy, but not enough. But what we want now, we want good fruit that can attract people to remain close to you. That can make people to become fanatics. They'll be looking for you all the time. They'll be expecting, is it there? Is it there? People will be happy to come to you. People will be happy to come to your house. They'll be happy to come and visit you because they know you are a good fruit bearer. You are not only a, a fruit bearer, but you are a good fruit bearer. Now, what will make you bear fruit? Because we want to become fruit bearer. When you go out of this place, we want to produce fruit. Now, this is the first thing about bearing fruit. The first thing about bearing fruit, fruit depends on the nature. Fruit depends on the nature. So, the nature of the tree is the first thing that is needed for the tree to produce. Do you know that there are, there are trees that are not fruit bearer? Hello? There are, there are trees, they, by their nature, they don't bear fruit. They can be there, they can be nice, but the nature of that fruit doesn't bear fruit. I mean the nature of the tree. The nature of that tree doesn't bear fruit. So the first thing you need to check, which nature do you have? From which nature are you? In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 God is telling us something about the nature. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. The Bible says, Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plant, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it. How? According to their various kind and nature. According to their various kind. So fruit comes from the nature. If your nature is not a fruit bearer, you can try whatever you want. You can force it. You can fake it. But you're not going to produce fruit. You need to have first the nature that produces fruit. 
And the nature that produces, let me first talk about this fruit. The fruit you are speaking about, maybe you are asking which kind of fruit the Lord, the Lord is telling us this morning. Those fruit are in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 20 to 20, 20, 23. Maybe you should read it. Put this one on the fridge. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Let's look at the fruits that we are talking about. That will make people run after you. That will make people enjoy your, your, your company. That will make people, you know, praise you. That will make people talk about you. The Bible said that, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, verse 23. Gentleness and self control those are these are the fruit we are speaking about those are if you are having you are a person of self control if you are a person of forbearance if you are a person of joy if you are a person of peace if you are a person of self control i can assure you people will enjoy being close to you if you are a person of short temper if you are a person of unfaithfulness when you promise, you never realize. You know, there are some people, when he's asking you, uh, brother, can you give me this? I will give it in two days. You start to be afraid because you, you start now recalling how many times this very same person gave you the same promise, but he never kept his promise. He has always been unfaithful. Have you ever been with a friend like that? He asks you for money. He says, I will give it back. Say, no, don't give it back. Just take it. Because you know that all the previous time that he tried to borrow your money, you know, he never bring it back. And even if you have to bring it back, he never bring it back in the time that you agreed. Unfaithful friend. Hello? You see, those are, the, those are the fruit I'm speaking about. I'm speaking about those fruit. For you to become bearer of those fruit, you must have the nature that produced this fruit. If you do not have this nature, you may fake it. You may decide, I'm not going to lie anymore. I will try to be faithful now. But it is not in your nature. If it is not in your nature, you may try. You will not going to get it. When it is natural, you're not going to force it. You're not going to fake it. You're not going to try it. It will come naturally because it is your nature. Hallelujah. It is in your nature to walk by your feet. You don't fake it. But it is not in your nature to walk with your hands. You may try. It may work a little bit. But I can assure you, you cannot walk the whole day on your hands. Blood will go to your head and you'll find you dead somewhere. Hallelujah. Because it's not in your nature. You cannot fly because it is not in your nature to fly. You may try. You may, maybe, but don't worry, we'll find you down. It is not in your nature to swim. But if you tell the fish to swim, fish will swim in the water. It is part of his nature. But if I ask the, the, the fish to walk like me, he won't make it. Because it's not his nature. So the first thing you need, you must be, you must have the nature of fruit bearer. <laughs> You must first have the nature of fruit bearer. If you have the nature that bears this kind of fruit, you shall bear them. Hallelujah. Come with me in the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. The Bible says, Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is born of God. Of Jesus, he, no, let me say it again. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. The Bible says, everyone who believes in Jesus, that he is a Christ, he is what? He is born of God. So when you are born of God, there is one thing that will be with you. Now, let's think a little bit. Every man or every person who is born from you have some of your genes. Have something from you. He has your nature. 
It is impossible for you as a human being to give birth to a dog. It's not possible. Because the dog does not have your nature. So if somebody is pregnant, we cannot discuss about the, that pregnancy and say, no, maybe we'll give birth to a dog. Maybe we'll be, give birth to a, to a, uh, a, a, I don't know, a cow. It is unnatural. Because if I see you pregnant, you as a human being, if I see you pregnant, I know you'll give birth to a human being. Have you ever been to wonder if the pregnancy I'm getting maybe is going to be a, a, a cat? Maybe it's going to be a serpent. No, you don't, you, you don't worry about that. Because you know, as long as I'm a human being, I can only give birth to a human being. And uh, he's human being, why? Because he is from your nature, it's coming from you. So the Bible said, those who are born from God, they have God's nature. Those who are born from God, they have what? Bo God's nature. Those who are born from God, they have... Come with me again. In the, the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. See now the beauty of the word of God. What God is saying about the nature. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. The Bible says, For you have been born again. How? Not of perishable seed, but of um, perishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. So now you are born from God. When you are born again, you have the nature of God. Unfortunately, in the church of the living God, we have many people who are not born again. We have people who have a new church. We have people who are, have, who are having a new place to worship. They have a new place to praise God, but they do not have a new nature. <laughs> so if you do not have a new nature, if you are not born from the uncorruptible word of God, the word of God even killed you and bring a new one in you, you will not going to have the nature of God. The nature of God, we acquire that nature by the, through, by the new birth. Through the new birth. When you are born again by the spirit of God, God gives you his nature. And when God gives you nature, you will not going to tell us that you have changed. We will see that you have changed. I don't know if people are talking about you and are saying that you have changed. Or people who saw you 20 years ago, they see the same person. If they see the same person, this morning you must ask God, kill me and bring a new one in me. Kill the old me. Look at the Bible saying that uh, we should kill the old self. That old self that used to live the life that did not honor God. He need to be killed. We need to go through the new birth. So that God may give you his nature. So the first thing that need to change, you need to change your nature. Don't do an effort to, to produce fruit. Don't do effort to become a calm man. A self-controlled man. You will never be a self-controlled man if it is not in your nature. If it is in your nature, it will come by itself. It will come automatically. You're not going to do any effort. You're not going to be a person of uh, integrity if it is not in your nature. You lie us because it is in your nature. Today you'll do an effort to be in integrity, but tomorrow you'll lose it. Hallelujah. The second thing that will help us to bear fruit, it is to reach maturity. To reach maturity. Anything which is not yet mature cannot produce. A child of five years cannot give birth. Even if, even though that daughter, that little girl of five years has everything already. She has a uterus, she has everything to bear a baby. But because it is not yet mature, it cannot bear a baby. Hallelujah. You cannot produce fruit if you haven't reached maturity. You see the problem? You are a child of God. You are born from God. You have that nature. But your problem, you're still a spiritual baby. 
Apostle Paul is saying it to the Hebrews. How come up until now you are still babies? You were supposed to be teachers. If you are still a baby, you have the nature of God. You are born from God. You have his nature, but you cannot reproduce the works of God because you are still a baby. You see, why are you not producing this fruit? Because you are still a baby. They must do everything for you. They must teach you everything. Every time we must come and comfort you to come to church. Every time we must come, brother, why don't you come to church? Then you come. Five years ago, you give your life to Jesus. Up to now, for you to come to church, you must come and push you. For you to pray, you must push you. For you to do this, they must push you. For the, you are still a baby. The babies cannot produce the fruit. The nature is waiting for you while you are going around remaining a baby. You see, when you, get, you take your child to postnatal care, they are monitoring the weight of the baby and they are monitoring the milestones of the baby. So at a certain age, they are expecting the baby to manifest certain characteristics. When the baby does not have those characteristics, we will say that this baby is having a problem. He's having growth retardation. He's having malnutrition. The church of the living God is full of malnourished children of God. Very sick, very small, very slender, with a big head, with a big tummy. They are unable to move. You are having a, a spiritual malnutrition. We need to get you out of that. Because after so far, we are waiting for you to produce fruit. You are unable to produce fruit. Why? Because you are sick. What brings malnutrition? The first thing that brings malnutrition is a lack of food. Hello? The first thing that brings malnutrition is lack of food. And when you have lack of food, it's going to be lack of development. And lack of development will be seen by us. You're going to have mental retardation because your brain is not growing like everyone. And your child will suffer to speak. We are, asked, we are looking at you, this, this guy, he's, he's in this church for 10 years, but he's the guy who still gets angry all the time, he still has problem all the time, does not have self-control. Now we are asking ourselves, what, what's wrong with you? The problem with you, you are having spiritual malnutrition. You are having spiritual kwashorko. You are having spiritual marasm. You are sick. We need to give you medication. This is the reason why we are giving you medication this morning. We are giving you medication so that you may become in good health. Because the entire nation, your city, your family is waiting for you since you become Christian. You are the same. They don't, there's no doubt about you, you, you giving your life to Jesus. You becoming born again, there's no doubt. But they are just wondering. How come since you are a child of God, you're still afraid? Of the dark. How come the still, you, since you are the child of God, you still lie? You still do this? You still do that? They are wondering. You know why they are wondering? It is because you're still a baby. A baby does things that sometimes you wonder. I remember a couple of years ago, one of my niece, we went to the village where there is no electricity. I think she was still three or four years. When she saw, you know, those, 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 uh, a petrol lamp. She always wanted to touch the flame. We will stop her. Then the, the, the mother said, the only one way for this child to stop touching the fire, he must get burned. Then he said, leave her. Then she wanted to touch the flame. You know that flame? Then she touched it. Then she jumped. She cried in a way that, you know, you never imagine. Now, every time she will see that flame, she say, mm, it's burning. It's burning. He knows now. Hallelujah. You know, children, you know, babies, spiritual babies, they do, babies, they do so much things. We're going to allow you to get burned for you to grow up. You need to grow. So what will help you to grow? What will help you to grow? It is food. And what is food? Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. The Bible said that man shall not live by food alone, but he shall live by the word of God. You shall wake up and start meditating the word of God so that you may eat. That is your food. You must pray. That is your energizer. You must come to church. That is your booster. When you are doing that, you will 
push you to grow. Will push you to grow. It is time for you to no longer be a baby. Can you tell your neighbor, wake him up, say, neighbor, don't be a baby, don't be a baby. Don't be a baby, don't be a baby. What can you expect from a baby? Look at this baby here, they are running around, they are disturbing us. What can you expect from them? Nothing. Where else people are waiting for you to pray for them? People are waiting for you to do something for them. Read with me. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. And then Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. We want to reach maturity. We want to become mature children. You need to push yourself so that you can reach it. Because if you're not mature, you're not going to produce. If somebody comes and wants to marry your daughter of five years, what will you say? No, marry her, take her. No, you say, no, my child, my baby is still a baby. You say, he's a baby. You can, are, you, are, are you sick? Are you mad? Are you, are, are you a pervert? How can you come and marry my baby? But if somebody comes and wants to marry your, your, your daughter of 25 years, are you going to treat that person of mad? You'll be happy. Say, yes, come and marry her. She's having age now. She can get married. Why? Because she's matured. Hallelujah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, stop thinking like children. Tell your neighbor, stop thinking like children. Stop it. Everything they will tell you, you are like a child. Stop thinking like a children. In regard to evil, be infant. If it's, it's about evil, be infant. No, nothing about evil. But in your thinking, be adult. Be adult. We are tired of uh, children, baby Christian. They're always angry in the church. After church, if you preach them, oh, you are preaching me. If you preach this, oh, you are preaching me. You are pre they are not preaching. If they are preaching, it's good. So that you can change. Be an adult. Be a, be a. Hallelujah. We want our church to have mature Christians who do understand. You see, an adult do understand. A child, when you tell him there is no money, you will not going to understand. But when you grow up, you'll understand. My little son, when we go to the mall, he wants everything in every shop. He want to be given everything from every shop. Yesterday, they went to the, the mall with their mom. When she, she, he came back, the first thing came to me, Papa, my mom did not want to buy me this, don't want to buy me this. But my kids who are grown up a little bit, they came calmly and they went to their place. Because what? They are having a little bit of maturity. This one is still small. He, he thinks that money can be taken every time. And they are Christian like that. They don't have maturity. They are thinking is like children. It is time for you to have a thinking of an, an adult. For you to become a... Because if you become an adult, you will be able to produce. Hallelujah. And for you to grow, you need to meditate, you need to pray, you need to attend church. Attending church is going to boost you. Meditating the word of God is going to make you grow. Praying is going to make you grow. You can't spend a day without praying. You can't spend a day without meditating the word of God. You never spend one day. You know, I went to a, a house of a friend. I saw him. He, 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 he doesn't have time during the week, but he makes sure on Saturday. You know, he catch up with all the Movango from Monday to Friday. Catch up. If you can catch up on those use, use, uh, useless things, you can catch up with the word of God. Hallelujah. The third thing, the third thing, the third thing for you to grow, remain attached to the vine. Remain attached to the vine, to the sap. A branch, when it is removed from the tree, the branch will do what? It will dry up. Even if you are the, the best of the branch, if it's detached from the tree, it will dry up. Jesus is saying in John chapter 15, verse 4 to 5, John chapter 15, remain attached to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Remain attached. Make the teaching of Jesus Christ your, your, 
your standard of life, your problem, what makes you to not produce fruit, it is because you're not receiving enough energy. You're not receiving the booster that can boost you to produce. And what can boost you to produce is the teaching of Jesus Christ. The principle of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, remain in me as also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You can't bear fruit by yourself. You must remain attached to the master. You must remain attached to the principles of God. You must remain attached to what the Bible says. If you are attached to Jesus, you listen to the voice of Christ, you listen, you care about Jesus' opinion, you will bear fruit. We are not bearing fruit because we are not attached to Jesus. We are attached to our pastor. We are attached to our culture. We are attached to the culture of the church. Do you know that the culture of your church can be different from the word of God? There are people who are obeying the culture of their church and they are not obeying the word of God. You show him in the, in the Bible. Look at what your church is doing. Look at what the word of God says. He says, yes, but I prefer our culture at church. If you prefer your culture of church on top of the the word of God, you're not going to grow. You're not going to produce. Many years ago, I met a friend who was attending a certain confession. I showed him clearly, my brother, this person that you are calling, you are praying like the mother of Jesus. The Bible never says anything that you should pray. I told him, look at what the Bible says, that when somebody dies, he cannot do anything any longer on this earth. But this guy said, no, I still want to go and bow in front of that statute. Praise God, because a couple of years later, he came to me, told me, now I understood. Please take me to the baptism. And we took, took him to the baptism. And today, he is a pastor in Kenya. We thank God for his life. Hallelujah. You know, people, they want to, they are giving more credit to their culture than to the word of God. You're not going to produce any fruit. Because the nature, when you take the word of God, the word of God will, it's like when you're not eating well. When you're having problems with your bones, you go to the doctor, they tell you not your problem, you don't have enough calcium. What will you do? You must eat calcium. If instead of you eating calcium because you don't have enough, you are eating anything else, protein, you will not going to get well. Hello? That's what is happening. The word of God, the principles of Christ will boost you to produce. If you don't remain in the principles of Christ, you're not going to produce. Read with me the, 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 the other scripture in Psalm. Oh, I like this scripture. Chapter 1, verse 3. Psalm 1, 3. The Bible says, Psalm 1, 3. The Bible says, that person, now let me start by one so that you may understand. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but who delight in the law of the Lord, and who meditate on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither whatever they prosper. You see? So when you are planted, when you, you listen the word of God, when you are attached to Jesus, you obey Jesus, you are like a tree which is planted close to the river bank. You will always produce fruit all the time. Because you receive the word of God that will always renew you. That will always regenerate. Do you know that the word of God has the power of regeneration? The word of God will regenerate you will give you again energy to produce fruit. Four. Four. If you want to produce fruit, you must know your season. You must know your season. Because fruit does not come at any season. Fruit comes on the rightful season. Hello? You can't, you can't get mangoes in any season. The other day, I bought some oranges. And then I brought them home. My wife said, no, it is not time for orange. Those, those oranges were not going to be nice. I didn't know when we take it, it was not nice. Because it was not the season of the orange. So for you to produce fruit, you must know your season. If you produce fruit out of your season, those fruits are not going to be well. 
So if you want to produce fruit, you must be in your season. You must be in your season. In the season of mangoes, mango will just grow. In the season of watermelon, watermelon will just grow. In the season of oranges, oranges will just grow because it is the season. It is time for you to know what is your season. What is your season of production? Which season shall you produce? Well, let's learn in the Bible which season we should produce. Let's go to the book of Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. We have a season. As a children of God, we don't produce fruit at any other season. We produce fruit as the proper season. And when we are in our season, we're not going to do any effort. Our fruit will come out just easily. Mm. Now listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. So God is comparing you to the palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Verse 13. Verse 13. Planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the court of our God. Verse 14. They will still, oh I like it. They will still bear fruit in old age. So they will still bear fruit in old age. Now come, to, come with me. Let me explain to you one thing. Why is the Bible, why is God comparing you as a Christian to the palm tree? There is one thing, there is one secret of the palm tree. The palm tree is one of the three that does not have any season. You can plant the palm tree at any season, it will still produce. Are you aware of that? The palm tree does not have any season. The palm tree, you can plant it at any season. As long as you put it outside, you plant it. The palm tree is planted from uh, the beginning of the year to the end of the year. It does not have any season. So God is comparing you to the palm tree because he doesn't want you to produce fruit in a particular season. Every season is your season of production. As a child of God, you can produce your fruit at any season. God is not expecting you only to produce fruit when everything is good with you. To produce food when everything is good in your family, when you are happy, when you're being paid. But God is expecting you to be like a palm tree. You must be producing your fruit in any season because any season is your season. Any season is a season of production. People say that, no, oh, you know, Pastor, you know, I'm going through tough time, so I cannot give. I'm going to going through tough time. I cannot smile. No, I cannot be joyful because it's painful. Listen, every time it is a time for you to produce fruit. In the book of Mark chapter 11, Jesus was walking with the disciple who were used to to take fruit by season. They were used to only produce, to only go and enjoy the fruit by season. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 14, even down you can live. The Bible says that Jesus saw a fig tree. He went to that fig tree. The Bible says he looked in that fig tree because he was looking for the fruit. But the disciple looked at him. They said, Master, what are you doing? What are you doing, Master? Are you crazy, Master? It is not yet the time of season. This is not the time. It is not the time for this fig tree to produce. The Bible says clearly, it was not yet the season of the fig tree, of the fig to produce. I mean, the tree of fig to produce a fig. But the Bible said Jesus went looking for fruit. He wanted to teach them a lesson that you as a child of God, you don't need any season. There are people, you'll tell you, why did you do that? Sorry, my brother. You know, it was not me. I was angry by that time. No, you are a child of God. Even when things are sour, you're still a child of God. Even when things are good, you are still a child of God. Even if you did not eat, you are still a child of God. Even when you are hungry, you are a child of God. Even if you lost your husband, you are a child of God. Even if you lost your wife, you are a child of God. Even if you lost your job, you're still a child of God. You will not going to change your behavior because you are going through a tough time. The Bible said that Jesus told them that uh, this guy must give me fruit. You as a children of God, you shall not be like this tree. Don't be like a fig tree who only produce fruit 
in a season, but be like a palm who produces uh, uh, fruit uh, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. He said that uh, we are planted like palm tree where? In the house of God. We are planted like palm tree where? In the house of God. The problem of the Christian of today, when you ask him, oh no, you must understand me. I was in a very bad corner. We do not only produce good fruit because we're in a good corner. We produce good fruit even when we're in a bad corner because our nature cannot produce anything else. Listen, if you take a rose and you crush it, no matter how hard you can crush the rose, no matter how slow you can crush the rose, no matter how hard you can crush the rose, it will do only one thing. It will produce the perfume. It will pro because all the, on, the only one thing that the rose knows how to do is to release his perfume. They killed Jesus, the most shameful, hurtful death. They killed him. But as they were killing him, only what was in him went out. He said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They thought that by pressurizing him, they're making pressure on him, he will be so in pain. Jesus was so much in pain. Remember before that time, he stayed three days without eating. He had been beaten up on a daily basis. He had been mocked by the people he was helping. They crashed on him. They did all sorts of bad things to him. He went through tough time. They took him to the cross. Now here was the opportunity for him to curse all these people. He had the possibility. He told even that soldier, I have the possibility to call a legion of angels to come and fight for me. When this guy was cutting the ear of Etikis, he told him, don't do that. Because I can call my father to come now. And fight for me. But he did not do that. Because all he had in him. It was love and forgiveness. When they crush you. And something else come out of you. It means that that thing has been there before. When problems crush you. And you start insulting us. And you start doing all sorts of funny things. It means just one thing. Those things were already in you. Because if they were not in you, no matter how we can crush you, you'll only take out love. No matter how we can crush you, you can only take out forgiveness. No matter how we crush you, you can only take out good things. Because it is in you. Hallelujah. Be like this palm tree. Produce a fruit in and out of season. Produce fruit in and out of season. You're a child of God. The last one. The last one, if you want to produce fruits, the last one, you need to care about your fruit. You need to prune your fruit, your, your, your tree. You need to care about your tree. You need to prune. Many Christians, they don't care about their Christianity. They don't take care of their Christianity. They don't prune their Christianity. You see, when you plant something, you need to prune around. Pruning means to remove all the bad herbs so that your tree can grow nicely. To prune is also to put water in your tree for that tree to produce. Read with me. John chapter 15, verse 2. John chapter 15, verse 2. Many Christians, they don't prune. They don't prune their life. You need to prune your life. You need to prune your life. Meaning sometimes uh, for your sake, for the sake of your Christianity, you need to cut some relationship. You need to take out some behavior. You need to separate yourself from some other things uh, because they are toxic to your Christianity. They are toxic to your productivity. They are toxic for you, to you for you to not produce. The Bible says, maybe give us verse 1, let, so that you can understand. Start by verse 1. The Bible says, and my father, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Now, verse 2, he cuts, my father, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why? Now listen to it. Why every branch that does not bear fruit, it does what? He pruned so that it may be more fruitful. Every branch that 
does bear fruit, it does what? It prunes. Are you getting that? God wants to prune you this morning. He must, he need to cut certain friends that are toxic. Certain friends that are disturbing your Christianity. That are always giving you bad advice. Boyfriend that are giving you bad advice. Nyatis that are making you run away from church. God wants to take them away. God wants to take them around. You know sometimes God is capable of killing some people. Because he sees that those people, they want to prevent you to produce fruit. God can kill them literally. Don't be the cause of the death of people around you. Sometimes, when you are pruning, you know when you are pruning what you do? Sometimes from the very same tree, you cut certain herbs that you think that, no, certain branch, no, this one is not good, you cut them. It will be painful. God will cut some things from your life. It can be painful. He will cut certain friends. He will separate you from certain people. You will think that it is painful, but God is doing it so that you may be able to produce the fruit. The Bible says he will prune so that he may produce even more. God sees that you're not producing enough because of that kind of friend you have, because of that kind of job you have, that job that makes you to run away from God all the time, that job that makes you to run away from the word, from the word of God all the time. If you continue like that, if it is preventing you to produce fruit, be careful. You'll call up demons and God will tell you there's no demon. I'm the one who took it away because I'm pruning you. You know, to prune is to remove things. Things that are not necessary. Things that are, you know, uh, overwhelming the plant for it to push, for it to grow. So you need to remove all those things. Sometimes God will remove uh, even certain ability that you have. Because you can see every time you got money, it makes you to not come to church. Because every Saturday night, you spend the night at Cocoa Night and then you cannot come to church. What God will do, he will take away that money. Then you don't have money anymore <laughs> to go to Cocoa Night. You know when people don't have money, they come to church. God, 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 this time, if you give me money again. And God knows he's not going to give it to you. Until you become a true child of God who understand that when I get money, it is from God. I must honor God. You see, brothers and sisters, people say that power corrupt. Power are, are, is not corrupting anybody. Power reveal the nature of people. People say that no, money corrupt. Money does not corrupt anybody. Money just reveal what was in you. When you were not having money, every day we're seeing you here. Since now you are a minister, that God has blessed you, you have money. We don't see you anymore. Since you start getting salary, we don't see you anymore. How many people here, when they were not having job, they were coming here? Every Sunday they were being here. Faithful. God, God. But since now God has started blessing them, what is happening? They are counting the day. I'm tired. I worked so much. Today I must rest. The very same God who gives you that blessing, now you are resting from him. How can you rest from the source? You can't rest from the source. You must always go to the source. You must always find time for God. Or whatever you love, you'll find time for it. You find time for your wife because you love her. You find time for your children because you love them. You find time for your job because you love your job. How come you don't find time for God? You don't love God. That's why God will prune you. Somebody say, God prune me. God will prune you. Pruning means that you will break some relationship. Pruning means you will remove certain things. Pruning means that he will, he will prevent you from certain things. You will miss certain things. If you don't want to miss certain things, you better produce and produce more. Hallelujah. Pruning, as I say, is also watering. Pruning is also discipline. You need to discipline your life. If you do not discipline yourself, you do anything with what God gives you, you will not gonna produce fruits. Hallelujah. God wants you to become fruit bearer. You must bear fruits. Let God prune you. I'm praying for God to prune you. To prune you from every pride. Pruning means also God will remove every behavior that are not honoring God. That is preventing you to produce. God will make those behavior to be exposed. He will make you fail. He will make you go through certain things so that you may understand that everything that you have, it is coming from God. The Bible says there is no, nothing that man ever had 
that he never received from God. Everything we have, it is coming from? Even if you think that you did an effort to get it, it is coming from God. I had, I labored the lot. I did not sleep. <laughs> there are people who did not sleep more than you. They did not get what you got. Yeah. You got it by the grace of God. Yeah. Now let's conclude and say it. John chapter 15 verse 8. God wants you to bear more fruit. God wants you to be more productive. God wants you to be more visible. God wants you to be impacting people's life. God wants you to show that you are a child of God. How? By producing the fruit in keeping with repentance. Fruit that are showing that, oh, here we have a child of God. We have heard people before who were, who were saying that they're children of God, but when, when, when you, you come, people say, no, this is a true child of God. Before they were fake. They were fake pastors. They were fake ministers. But since this guy came here, no, he's a child of God. They'll always try you. Listen to this. The only one way to know the fake from the genuine is to put you into test. Is to tempt you. Temptation is the only one thing that show the genuine and the fake. When you are in trial, this is the only one way. God will allow trial to come to you. The very same way for, for the gold to be separated from dirtiness, they put it into fire. God will allow you sometimes to go into situations. That is the only one way you will show your true nature. They will crush you. They will press you. Then what is in you will go out. You know, when things, when circumstances of life crushes you, what goes out, what you do, it is showing your nature. Let's rise up on our feet so that we can pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Become a fruit bearer. Are you a fruit bearer? You can become a fruit bearer. You can bear fruit. Fruit that show that you are a child of God. God is looking for fruit bearer. Do you want the Lord to have his way in you? God wants to have his way in you. So that you can be a changed person. A changed mother. A changed father. A changed Christian. Let's pray together Lord Jesus. Come and have your way in me. Come and have your way in me. Come and control my soul. All my feelings. Which are tricking me sometimes. All my mind. All my decision. Let them be controlled by you. Lord control my spirits. Control my body. Control my entire being. Let me be a fruit. Fruit from your nature. Let me be a fruit. Good fruit. Fruit from your nature. In the name of Jesus. I confess. I am changed. I am transformed. I am a new person. I will bear fruit, good fruit, in Jesus' mighty name.